Hey everyone, a complex back with another video and today today we're going to be chatting about modding in Warframe. This is the first video in a series of videos that we're going to do for the basics of Warframe and we're going to start with what is arguably the basics of modding cuz modding in Warframe probably one of the most important things you can do and also probably one of the most confusing things that you can do. It all goes hand in hand. So today we're starting with like the basics. Um in this video, we are in specific going to concentrate on just exactly what modding is, the various parts that you will see when you start modding and what it kind of all means. And then in a different video, we'll talk about how to take all of that knowledge and apply it to an actual build. So if you're having any trouble with the basics or where any of that applies, hopefully this video will help. And uh, let's just kind of dive into it. I've got um, I've got my girl Garuda here. She's going to she's going to help me with this. First, though, before we head into the arsenal, I just want to go over quickly. When you first start up Warframe, you know how you have to kind of build all the different segments to your orbiter? One of the segments that you build is your your mods, where they're housed. Now, if you just kind of want to sit through, go through a bunch of mods, see what you have, what it all does, this and that, this is, this is kind of where you want to be more than anything in some ways. Um, you can look at just all your mods. They have it divided up into different slots. So, uh, for instance, all of my Warframe mods are here. I can sort by a variety of topics. Recent, rarity, uh, rating, price, apparently, what they're, what they're worth. Uh, I can also see all of my duplicates. Um, and so this is just a nice little way to go in to see what mods you have. This is also really handy when you're coming out of a mission. And you're like, oh, I got some mods and I have no idea what I got or this and that. Or did I already have that or or what have you? This is really great. I like to sort by reason. And that way I can just come in and see exactly what I just got recently. It makes my life a little bit easier. Um, and this is also where you can do a few different things with your mods. Uh, you can do something what is called transmute, which uh, you can use for mods to create a brand new mod. Uh, you can do fusion, which is rank up the mod. So if you click on a mod and hit fusion this is where you can make it more powerful so see if i rank power drift up all the way um you can see my stats go up to it and it also the drain on it goes up which we'll talk about in a minute and it costs endo and credits and endo is a whole other currency in the game there's actually a lot of different currencies in warframe now they think about it but that's besides the point so th that's kind of the basics of your modding area you can also dissolve mods for endo if you need more endo this is a great way to get some quickly uh, you can also sell for credits so if you need credits this is also another thing that you can do some people think you should only uh dissolve mods into endo other people are like eh, do whatever you want me i generally do whatever i need the most of at that one moment so Shall we go in and look at our mods? Or how to mod? Mod section. Let's do this. So, when you go into the upgrade section of anything, this is generally the screen that you're going to see. It looks a little different for weapons. It looks a little different for uh, companions. It looks a little different for, um, for K-Drive, stuff like that. But overall, it's kind of the same setup. No matter what, you will see eight mods. More frames get two additional slots up here. Uh, Melee get the additional up here for the stance card and then um like kubers kavats companions stuff like that they don't have anything up here but you will always see these eight now off to the left depending on what you're looking at whether it's a warframe or a weapon or uh, a sentinel anything like that you will see its uh relevant stats so in this case you'll see garuda's relative um stats you'll see her armor her energy her health shields her sprint speed and then you'll see that her duration efficiency range and strength are all set to 100 percent because i haven't messed with them yet um you also see up here it tells you what rank of whatever it is you're doing is and then you kind of get the little mastery symbol once it hits rank 30 which is really nice so you know it's ranked um and then here you'll see capacity which is the amount of mod points that you'll have um, to use towards your build, which I will talk about in detail in just a moment. And then for Warframes specifically, you will see four symbols under your, um, your stats sheet. And this will tell you what each ability the Warframe has. You'll see a little video, which is really nice, a little description of the ability. And you'll also see um, 
the stats like how much it drains off of your energy, what the range of it is, what the duration, so on and so forth. Any relevant information that is going to help you make a powerful build for that Warframe and in that ability in particular is what you'll see in... Um, in this little drop down for each of the abilities. And this is really nice. This actually came in a more recent um, update for Warframe. So I, I'm enjoying this a lot. It's nice. We don't have to toggle between screens anymore. I don't know if you guys remember that. I do. It was a pain in the booty, but now we don't have to do that, which is pretty awesome. Now let's talk about mod capacity. Mod capacity is probably the easiest and also most important part of modding. So Garuda is a rank 30 uh, fully leveled Warframe, which means that her capacity without touching anything else, without adding anything else, doing anything else, she has a 30 um, mod point capacity, basically. Now, if I was to do something like pop in Power Drift that has four points that you can use on it, it'll drain four of that mod capacity. So now I have 26 out of 30. That's that's that basic. Now, the thing to remember is you only have, for the most part, eight slots on anything. So it's figuring out your build, how you want to maximize this amount of points, whatever it ends up being. When a Warframe is unranked or is a lower rank than 30, how the amount of your capacity actually changes. So as a Warframe increases in rank it also increases in capacity until it hits 30. Now your mastery rank that overall MR score that actually helps how much um, you get an initial um, for an initial capacity rather. So something like Nova who I've never used I am a MR let me just um, remove this I am an MR 17. So Nova has a 17 capacity to start with. Uh, as I increase in my mastery rank, this base number will also increase. So somebody that is an MR27 currently will actually start with a 27 out of 27 mod capacity for an unranked frame, which is really nice. So that is a reason to um, pay attention to your MR and another benefit to uh, to increasing it. But back to Garuda. Let me let me let me find her. There you are, honey. So. While we're here, we've talked about what the capacity is. Now let's talk about polarities. So when you're talking about modding, a lot of times you'll hear V polarity, D polarity, stuff like that, a dash polarity. What it is is the symbol to um, the right of how much a card is worth is its polarity. Now you'll see here with Garuda, she came with this polarity and then this polarity here. Now you'll see if I take, for instance, um, let me just find a good mod to, to, we'll show, we'll show that one. Uh, let's see. Plex. Aha. This one's really nice. So primed flow. If I just pop that in, in a non-polarized slot, you'll see that it actually took up the full 10. If I put it in its matching polarized slot, it only took five. So by matching your polarity symbol to the, um, slot that's available it cuts the energy drain of that mod in half so instead of being cutting out 10 it now cuts out five points of your capacity however if i was to take this mod and instead put it where it doesn't belong which you can kind of see how like see how it turns red to my left and it's green to the right it's the game is trying to tell you like don't put it here but if you do you'll actually see that it has an energy drain now of 13 which is three more than the mod itself is worth you're actually being penalized for putting it in the wrong slot so so don't do that <laughs> basically unless you have to you might see a few builds from a few um, more veteran Warframe players where they do have something in the wrong slot. And that's simply because um, they have the overall capacity for it and they haven't changed that polarity slot on their own yet. They just haven't taken the time to or they don't want to or this is just a test build or something like that. So overall, good practice. Just don't, don't match up the wrong symbols. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is on Warframes, you have these two top um, card slots, which you don't have for other things. So the one on the left is what they call an Aura card, and Aura cards are very special. They have the same application of match your symbol to um, the card, but 
instead of it taking away half of the value of the card so it has less of a drain, it actually increases your mod capacity. Aura cards are very fun in that regard. So Steel Charge is worth nine, and I popped it in to the Aura slot, and it actually gave me plus 18 mod capacity, which is awesome. Um, now, if I was to put in, let's say, Toxin Resistance instead, it would give me a plus five, but I'm still being penalized for, I don't get the double, and it actually reduces two. Um, so if you have something in here that you desperately want to use, and it's not the right polarity, you can still kind of use it. Just know that's not the best of ideas. You can eventually change that um, down the road when you get to some more advanced modding. But for basics to start, match the symbols. It's going to be a fantastic idea. And rank these cards up all the way um, in the mod area that we showed earlier. Because that is going to get you an even bigger mod capacity. Now, an Exilus adapter is a thing, I guess is the best word for it, that you can buy from Cephalon Samaris normally. Uh, you can also occasionally get it as rewards from invasions or just rewards for various activities. Occasionally, an Exilus adapter will pop up for that. And when you apply an Exilus adapter here, it unlocks this slot and then you can use special mods. And now these special mods you get further down the road in Warframe. So it's something that if you're just starting out, you don't have to worry about right away. Um, but these mods are really useful. Um, I love them. And so I'm very picky about what Warframes I install them on just because Exilus adapters, they're easy to get, but at the same time, they're a pain in the butt to get because you've got to rank up um, Cephalon Samaris and then spend um, the syndicate points to get them. So I'm very fussy about who gets what. Gruda hasn't gotten it yet. She will eventually though, I promise. Um, but you can use any of these specialty Exilus mods in the, the slot here. You can also, though, just use them in any old slot as well. So if you have an Exilus but you don't have an adapter slot to unlock this, no worries. You can just use the mod in one of your regular eight slots. You can also apply, if you have the right polarity already, um, apply it here just like that. And then it'll take off less of a drain. Now, the other thing that you can do in Warframe is actually, I'm just going to take this way so you can see the, um, the 30 out of 30 still. You can actually double your mod capacity. I know, sounds a little crazy, but you might have heard of something referred to as a potato. Uh, in Warframe, it, not a literal potato. Um, these are auric and catalyst and reactors. Uh, it's a yellow potato and a blue potato. And those potatoes uh, will double your mod capacity when applied. And I have saved the one for Garuda for a moment such as this. So if I um, slotted this in, yes, you will see now she has a 60 out of 60 mod slot, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you can get these from the whatever your the weekly night um, or the Nightwave series rather is right now. Normally that store has a um, blue and a yellow potato available. Uh, you can get them from Gifts of the Lotus uh, when they happen after dev streams. Uh, you can find them as rewards for invasion. Sometimes the various other things will um, give them as rewards. So there's a variety of places that you can get those potatoes. When you first start playing, they are a little hard to find. Um, but then once you start playing and you start doing Nightwave and building up a supply of them or doing more invasions, this and that, you'll amass a small fortune of them very quickly. Uh, for the most part, you find you can find the blueprints for them too, and you do have to build those uh, in the foundry. So now that I have this, if I reapplied right steel charge to this, you'll see that now she's got a 78 out of 78. So this is quite literally the max a Warframe can have currently is uh, 78 capacity out of 78. So that's it. That, that's how many points I can put in to a Garuda build, which is pretty awesome. Now, a few other things to note for um, building various builds is Warframe does allow config A, B, and C, and you can you can rename them. So you can give them all custom names. Uh, some people might have like a farming build. They might have a sortie build or just a, you know, whatever they, they have for different names, different variants. But these are all unique builds that you can have for each Warframe and weapon. I can actually show you um, what they look like on 
on weapons. So for instance, like you can see here, config B has nothing, but my A is full. And you can actually see too, the nice thing is if you're switching from A to B, you can see that your stats are changing. So mine are just going back to their basics. But if you kind of want to compare one build to another and see which one is more powerful for a particular something, you can quite easily see that by switching from A to B, which is just a really nice benefit. The other few things to mention is that when you're new to Warframe, if modding seems incredibly overwhelming, which I get because it can be, if you hit the actions button, you can hit auto install. And this quite literally auto installs you all of your mods. And it's going to use your mod capacity to the full as best as it can. And it's going to try to give you a basic build. Now, this isn't too, too bad. It's something that you can definitely use to start. Uh, when I first started Warframe, I actually would hit auto install a lot. And then I'd, um, I'd tweak it from there. I'd say, all right, I know that this doesn't belong here as an aura card. So I'd swap it out for the right one. Um, I'd say, all right, I don't need you know, an ability duration and to health. So I take them out and I put in something else and this and that. So this is just a really easy way to get you started overall. Before we go though, I realized the one thing I forgot to mention to you guys was how to find those aura cards. So if you go into the Nightwave store, currently right now we've got Emissary as the, um, as mind? the current Nightwave series. What is up, Nora? If you go into Cred's offering, you will see that they do have aura cards available for um, whatever series we're on creds um, and it does change out every week so they they rotate the store uh, so you can pick up a variety of them that way it's actually super easy now to get uh, which I'm really pleased for so in that way if you're new to modding Warframe or anything like that or you haven't picked up a few of these this is a great way to get them and the other thing I did want to mention quickly as far as aura cards go is that aura cards Let's actually what's next. <laughs> Nora they actually do apply to your whole team so for instance how we talked about using um, a steel charge on uh, Garuda everybody in my squad would actually benefit from that 60% melee damage which is which is incredible in my opinion. Um, things like corrosive projection is definitely a, um, a player favorite um, because it reduces enemy armor. So everybody would get that bonus, not to mention they stack. So you could definitely have two people running corrosive projection and definitely run that benefit times two. Uh, rejuvenation is a really nice mod because it's just going to regenerate health. So if you see yourself in a squad and you're like, why is my health regenerating? It could be because one or two or even three people in your squad are running rejuvenation mods and uh, and you're getting the benefit from that, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. But y'all, that's pretty much it. That is the Warframe basic, basic, basic 101 to modding. Hopefully this helped if you were having any questions on some of those basic topics. We will do another video very soon on the how to make a build and how different mods apply to uh, different Warframe abilities. But that, like I said, is a story for a different day. Thank you so much for joining me, y'all. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments down below. We do have Warframe Wednesday on Twitch. So every Wednesday I do stream a Warframe. Feel free to find me on there. Ask me any questions you might have in regards to Warframe in general. And uh, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your night and or day, depending on where you are in the world and I will catch you next time. Bye, guys.